Hey everyone, James Hurst with The Marketing Show, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about trigger links. We're going to do a deep dive on the trigger links in high level. If you haven't heard of high level yet, take a look at my free trial link in the description below, but it's a super powerful thing of being able to click on a link and start the next thing in your automation. I like to think of these trigger links as the in-between between the automations and the humans, right? You kind of have to, sometimes you have to see, did someone show up? Yes, they did. I know they showed up because I saw them. Was an invoice paid? Yes. Click that, click that trigger link. This episode is sponsored by Extendly for High Level. If you haven't met the good folks over at Extendly, uh, you ought to take a look and see what they have to offer. They're one of the bigger support agencies in the high level space right now. So they, they have a snapshot store with completely crazy built out snapshots, uh, white label onboarding support and training, high level dashboard customization, as well as training uh, from the Blairs, the Academy for High Level, Melissa and Stephanie Blair. So I had a chance to meet Bayant in person just recently in Dallas at the Sasspreneur event. We had a chance to get to know each other better. I've also been working with them and teaching and coaching in their Facebook group. And you may have seen some of my tips and tricks videos that I put on for them as well. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at Extendly, go to getextendly.com. That's getextendly.com. Now back to the show. Did someone join a Zoom call? Did, did someone uh, do a hundred other things? What are those hundred other things right here? Check this out. So you have to start a trigger. You start with a trigger link trigger. You, you have to come here and pick the link, okay? But before you can do that, you would have to make the link and you kind of say, well, what does this, what do I want this to mean when they click that link, okay? So you'll pick a link, but then what can you do with a trigger link? This is what you can. Any, essentially any action. I can send an email, I can send a text, I can send a DM, I can update a status, I can move someone further along in the pipelines is a common one, okay? How would you go about making one? So that's where you would say what the thing is gonna do. This is where you actually come and make the trigger links. Over on the marketing section, you go to trigger links, go to links, you'll see that they have these different meanings. If I go, if I go to try to make one, I give it a name. So I basically, what, is it, what does it mean when they done? It means like, they clicked uh, they, my, my, um, my Google review link. Okay, so now I'm gonna know whether they've even clicked on the link to leave a review, a five-star review. Link URL, wait, wait, wh where does this thing go? And that is, that is the question and that is why you have to make a web page for these things to go. If, if you don't have a specific place, you're gonna need to go make a place for these to land. And that's the thing, they do not care they do not care where they go. It, it just, they need to go somewhere. And this is what you're going to do. You're going to create a page that looks like this. Thank you. Your response has been recorded. Thank you. Your response has been recorded. Where's the URL? Response recorded page. That's a bad URL, but your response has been recorded. And response, your response has been recorded. We'll be in touch. You just need a place any place. Look at this. I use the same one. Rejection letter, go share. Mark is paid. My Google reviews link. I use the same one over and over and over again. That's what I'm trying to drive home with you guys is that whether it's solved or claim this ticket or whatever you want the meaning of that trigger link to do, it doesn't matter what it is on the left necessarily. It doesn't really matter where it goes. You give it the meaning right here when you name it, but where it goes, it has to go somewhere. So you're just going to go to your site, your funnel, and then you'll go into any of your um, existing pages, make a new page and say, that's where it's going to go. You could make a, if you had a yes and a no, you could make a yes page and a no page, but it doesn't even care. You can send it to the same page and it has different meaning based on what you named it. Okay. So let's take a look at a couple of examples as well. Check this out. So if I come here and I, I saw a lead comes in, I say, hey, after about 30 minutes ago, someone uh, contacted you. Can you please update the current status? I will call them now. Oh, it's a trigger link over here. I did talk to them on the, a different trigger link. I left a voicemail, a different trigger link. I booked an appointment with them. Okay, so all of these different trigger links are powered by different workflows. See, uh, here's the different links for those. And then we have different automations that power what happens when any of those trigger links are clicked. Okay. So let's look at this. Uh, I have an appointment. So the trigger linked is I picked the one that matches that. 
I create an appointment. I do an internal notification. Has the appointment trigger link clicked? All right. So check this out. I like to uh, wrap my PayPal links. I, I wrap my PayPal links in a trigger link. So you can kind of do a little bit of nested stuff here, right? I wrap the PayPal link in a trigger link so that I know when the client is actually clicking, the, the uh, they're about to pay the invoice. And then I text myself a trigger link that says, that's the marked as paid trigger link. So I see, uh, I see that they're about to pay. I get a notification. I see the payment come through. I click marked as paid. And that sends the thank you. I got your payment all that kind of stuff it updates things. All right. So we've got updating the statuses of leads coming in. We've got uh, payments coming in. I even wrap the Zoom calls in trigger links as well. Let's see if we can find that one. So if I would, if I would put my Zoom link in a trigger link and then someone's about to join Zoom, then I can key off of that action and send myself a notification. So-and-so has joined this, so-and-so has joined this, um, the link. So also, what does it look like in a workflow? So here on here on PayPal, if I click on that right there, you can see I'm actually using a trigger link. And that's how I know if it gets clicked or not. Another great example of this is in my reviews workflow. So I click, I made a trigger link for my reviews. This is the smarter review requests snapshot. Um, and I send, a, I send a text. I don't just give them the link to my Google reviews page. I give them a trigger link because that way I can, I can actually wait. I wait up to 15 minutes and then I see if they've even clicked the link. See, I keen off of that branch there, trigger linked, clicked. And then I would pick my Google reviews link right there. Okay. Now this is one of my awesome workflows. People have really liked this one. This is something you can get on jameshurst.com slash store. So this is my smarter review requests uh, snapshot, which you can get right here. And uh, there's other videos here you can watch about that, but you can learn all about that right here. It's a hundred dollars. Um, well worth it. It's enabled people to turn off things that they pay recurring monthly for. So per client. Yeah, so trigger links guys. So you just need to make a response recorded page. You can send now any trigger links response to that. And then you can start keying off of your workflows and go from there, right? So trigger links are awesome. I use them all the time. I hope that's super helpful for you guys. And with that being said, take a look at the links in the description below. I've got free trials. I've got snapshots. I've got coaching. And thanks for joining me guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the show. Advice given is for educational purposes only and may not be applicable to your business. You should know that the marketing show receives compensation through its affiliate relationship for the products and services it recommends. Thank you for your support and we hope to see you on the next episode of The Marketing Show.